What is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create these cinematic car renders inside of Blender. Now obviously you will need Blender for this video, but it is actually free, so you can just go ahead and go to blender.org. So if you don't already have it, then you can just go here and download it. So once you have Blender installed, the next thing you'll need is obviously a 3D car model. And you can either go ahead and 3D model one yourself, but obviously that's going to be pretty difficult to do. And I'd only recommend doing that if you actually have experience in doing it. So I assume most of you guys will just be going on here and downloading a 3D model. So I like to use CG Trader or Sketchfab to find my uh, 3D models. So you can go over there and just kind of look around for kind of car that you're wanting to use. And there's tons of different options. Some are free, some are paid. Obviously the paid ones are going to be higher quality. So you kind of get what you pay for, but the free ones are pretty good as well. Um, over here on CG Trader, there's some pretty high quality models, um, but I'm going to be using this one on Sketchfab. So if you want to use this one, this Porsche GT3 RS. I'll have this link down in the description below. All you have to do is create an account on Sketchfab and then download the 3D model. And I like to use the .fbx. So if you are going to go ahead and download a model, make sure it's like a compatible file with Blender, which most of these are. But I would stay away from like these other ones here. These are more for like 3D printing and not really used for, um, I guess, Blender. It doesn't have all the full textures. So make sure you're using like .fbx or obj. Now inside of Blender here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the default stuff by selecting it and then hitting X on my keyboard and then just deleting it. Then we can go up to File, Import, and since that is a .fbx file, you want to select the fbx, but if it was like obj or whatever, or even a Blender file, you'll have to use those. So way front is the .obj, but instead I'm going to be using the fbx. Open that up and then locate that file. And you'll most likely get a folder that has the source as well as the textures. So just open up the source file and you should have that original file here and you can go ahead and import that in. And ideally when you import your car, everything should be textured and you should have all the textures loaded up on your car. And to see the textures, you want to make sure you're on this tab right here, the viewport shading, um, or you can use the uh, rendered view. But obviously I don't have any lights in my scene, so you won't see anything. So this uh, viewport shading will work for now. And as you can see, it looks like all the textures loaded up, which is great. Because if it didn't, then you'd have to kind of mess around and start adding them back on yourself. But from here, what I like to do is kind of customize the textures and make it more unique. So in the bottom left, you want to click this little button that brings up this drop down menu. And let's go into the shade editor. And this is where you'll see all of your different nodes for each individual texture. So the first thing I like to do is just kind of take like a look around the car and kind of see what stands out to me. If there's any textures that don't look correct or, or if I see something that stands out that doesn't look kind of right. The first thing that kind of stood out to me is this like carbon fiber. I think it's like an air vent or whatever. But what you want to do to fix this is obviously the carbon fiber isn't this like scaled up. Like it's not supposed to be like that. A good example of what the carbon is supposed to look like is on the roof here. I think what happened here is the size of it just got messed up. So this should be a pretty easy fix. All we'll have to do is select the body of the car. And if you actually hit tab on your keyboard, it'll bring up the different like vertices and you can kind of edit them here. So inside of the edit tab, if you just click on the material, it'll actually show you where it is in this list here. So we should have, yeah, all the mapping, which we'll need to change. And for some reason they're using two mapping nodes. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and delete one of those and bring the vector from this one into the uh, roughness as well. And now we just have one mapping node because we don't really need two of those. So what we want to do is go into the scale here, select all of them and then click one to bring it back down to size. And now that I've scaled it down, I'm actually noticing there's some UV mapping issues here. You can see the texture is like super stretched out, which isn't ideal. You don't want to have that in your render. So what we want to do is go back into the edit mode by hitting tab on your keyboard. And in the material, you want to go over here and hit select. And that will select all the different uh, vertices faces for that material. And what we can do is hit U on our keyboard, unwrap this, hit U again, and then hit Smart UV Project. And now you should see your textures <laughs> all over the place. It's probably not where you want it to be, but let's go back into scale. And I think we should put this back to one or okay, no, not one. Let's go lower than so 0 0.01 maybe. That's definitely looking better, but I think it should be scaled up just a bit more. But besides that, everything else actually looks really good. I don't see too many things that stands out. I'm going to go ahead and add a quick light into my scene here. So pulling down Shift A will open up this add. We can go ahead and add in a new light. I'm going to use area. You also want to go over to this camera tab and make sure your render engine is on cycles. 
and let's just use the supported. And if you do have a GPU, I recommend using that because the CPU will take a lot longer to render out these scenes. So use the GPU. We'll change these settings later on, but now we can go into the render tab and actually see what this is gonna look like. I'm also just gonna go ahead and add in a quick plane. So scaling this up so we have kind of some more shadows on the ground as well. Now this is optional, but if you want your lights to actually light up here, as you can see in this model that I downloaded, the lights aren't actually on. So to turn these, I guess, on is you want to make sure that you're on the light bar itself behind this little glass. There is this light bar that this uh, original person modeled out. So you just want to select that and then go into the uh, texture tab again. And you should see all these different textures. It's obviously helpful if the person actually renamed them to what this supposed to be like taillight running. Um, you got brake light, so I think the tail light is the one I should be changing here. So in this texture tab, I'm just going to delete all these nodes. Hit Shift A and search up emission and then drag this emission onto the surface. And now we can go back into that render tab really quick. And if I turn this off and on, you can see we now have a light there, but this should be red. So we can just go ahead and change the color to red here. I'm also going to go ahead and change the emission strength to 5%. And yeah, that process is pretty much the same for if you want to change the headlights as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you kind of change the look of the headlights and the taillights. If you want to add lights to them, that is how you do it. The easiest way I know how to do it, but there's probably other ways you can go about that. Another fun thing you can mess around with is changing the car paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the body of the car again. And right here, I have this car paint material. So in this principled BSDF, you can go here and just mess with the color, change it to whatever you like. You can also mess with the different roughness tabs metallic so you can get a super shiny um, result here and if you turn on the render tab it'll look even crazier like you can get some pretty crazy results just by messing with these different tabs this is one of the most fun parts about it is just kind of changing the different colors and adding your own style to the car honestly this like rose gold kind of pink color looks pretty cool um, on this gtr i think i might actually keep this color just for this example here now that we have our car modeled out and we have all the textures, we can actually start modeling out the rest of the things and adding in our cameras. So what I'm going to do is delete our light in that plane that we created and click Shift A again, go into Mesh and create a plane. I'm going to scale this up actually quite a bit. Yeah, something like this. Also, I forgot to mention, but if you don't know how to actually scale up your planes or different objects, you just click S on your keyboard and it'll open up the scaling here. If you don't want to do that, you can just go into the scale here and scale it up this way. Now let's go ahead and hit tab on our keyboard and make sure you're on the edge select mode here. So in that edit mode, you want to go ahead and select three of the four edges on this plane. By holding down shift, you can select all three of those edges and then hit E and then Z to extrude onto the Z axis like this. Then go ahead and select those original three edges again. And we're going to bevel out these edges. So hitting control B and then if you move your cursor around, you can kind of see how it bevels it, but we want to bevel this so it's like more of a smooth, gradual ramp. So if you use your scroll wheel, you can actually see how it creates more or deletes more of those, I guess, extra vertices, I'd say. And once again, just dragging it up and down will create how big of a ramp you want. Somewhere around here looks pretty good. And then we can go ahead and right click on our object and hit shade smooth. And I'm just going to add a texture to our background. You can change this background color to whatever you want. And you want to make sure the roughness is up to around 0.8. Now let's go ahead and start adding some lights to our scene. So once again, shift A and then light area. Let's move this around and position this kind of towards how we had it before and change the power here to 400. And then to duplicate that light, I'm going to hit shift D and then move this over. So we have another light we can use. I'm going to put this one on the opposite side and we can go into rendered view here to see what the lights are actually doing in our scene. And I think I'm going to do one more, but more kind of facing on top of the car. And there you go. That is how you create a pretty basic lighting setup for your scene. Now, this kind of depends on the scene you're going for. If you just want a pretty simple lighting setup that just shows off the car, really just shows all the detail and everything, then I'd recommend doing this like three point lighting setup. But if you want something a little bit more moody than just having like one of the lights on, like something like this looks super clean and gives off a totally different effect. Looks a lot more honestly cinematic, but I've seen a lot of videos where it's just a super, I guess, direct um, lighting setup like this. So honestly, it might lower the power on some of these lights here. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a 
pretty easy way to light up your scene. So once you have your lighting set up, we can actually go ahead and create our camera. So once again, shift A and let's create that camera. Um, the focal length, that 50 millimeters is honestly pretty good. 50, anywhere to 100 is kind of the sweet spot. Inside the output tab here, I'm gonna change the frame rate to 30. Change the resolution to 1080 by 1920 since this is for um, a vertical format. Then let's change the file format to FFmpeg video. And in this encoding tab, change this to MPEG4. That's pretty much just gonna be a .mp4 file. And then the rest of the settings should be good. And then as well in the output tab, you can change to where you want this file to be saved to. For the frame range, I'm gonna change the end to 90 because 250 is way too many frames that I need for this render. And then in the render settings, I'm gonna change the viewport down to like 300. And then for the render, I wanna change the samples down to 200. Now the more samples, the higher quality the video is gonna look. But I don't want each render to take like 10 hours just to render out. So 200 is honestly fine, especially if you're using this denoise here. It does a pretty good job. But I'm gonna change the denoiser model here. And that should be everything for our render settings. So now we can go ahead and create our camera animation. An easy way to move your camera around is inside of this view tab here. If it's not open, you can just drag on the side here and it should open up your view. Select this camera to view. Now when you move around your cursor, it'll actually move the camera around. So you can position this to however you want it to be. And let's go ahead into that camera, making sure that you have the camera actually selected or you actually wanna go into the object here. And for all of the location and rotation properties, you wanna set a keyframe at the start of your timeline Then go to the very end so for me, it's at 90. You then want to move this camera around to your end keyframe. And then once again, select all those keyframes just so you make sure it actually saves those position properties. I almost forgot, but back in this uh, render properties here, you want to make sure you have motion blur enabled. Um, this will just add, like it says, motion blur. But I mean, I guess you could have it off if you want, but I just think motion blur makes it look a lot more realistic. Now I'm going to go up to render and click render image to get a quick little view of what this render is going to look like. So from here, what I actually like to do is go into the compositing tab, make sure the use nose is on, and I'm gonna add a few different nodes here. I'm gonna add first off the viewer node so I can actually see what I'm changing. Change this onto that viewer node. So I'm gonna click Shift A to add a new node. Let's search up lens distortion, drag this into our nodes here. So it's from image to the image and then image out to the image to this viewer here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this first value to negative 0.01. And then I'm going to change the second value here to 0.01. As you can see, it adds a bit of a like RGB distortion around the edges. You can up this value if you want, to like 0.03. But once you're done messing around with those settings, you want to make sure that your output is actually back onto your composite uh, node here. And once you're happy with how everything looks, you can then go ahead and go back into this render tab and click render animation. And from here, it'll just start rendering out each frame one by one. And as you can see up here, it is gonna tell you the different stats. So the last frame took 17.9 seconds to render out, which means if you calculate that 17 seconds times 90, that's whatever's on screen here. I can't do the math right now, but so that's kind of a quick way to figure out how long each render is gonna take. So I guess I'll see you guys when this is done rendering out. So once your video is rendered out, you should have a video file like this. I went ahead and stopped my video render halfway through around like 40 frames because I didn't want to wait the whole entire time uh, to finish this video. So I just have a few seconds, actually not even a few. I think this is literally one second worth of a render here. So what I'm going to do is bring this into After Effects. Obviously, you can bring this into whatever software you like, um, but I'm just going to be using After Effects here. And what I like to do is add some color grading, grain and sometimes a vignette. So the easiest way to do this in After Effects is creating a few different adjustment layers. On this first layer, I'm gonna add a LUT to this. So apply color LUT. I'm just gonna add one of my LUTs here. And this is way too strong. So I'm gonna bring down the opacity down to like 40% and then create another adjustment layer. This time I'm gonna use uh, some grain. So adding on this add grain here, change the preview to final output. I'm gonna change this preset to the Kodak Vision 500 and then bring the intensity down to like 0.5. And then let's add a vignette to this. And if I zoom in here onto the shot, you can kind of see it just adds in a bit more natural grain to the image and the colors just help bring everything together. As I toggle these adjustment layers on and off, this is the before and then that's the after. It just looked way too sharp and artificial without the uh, grain and other layers. So bringing on that little bit of subtle grain 
and that color grade really helps bring everything together. And yeah, from there, you basically just want to keep doing the same process and rendering out different animations, different shots and compile your own little cinematic video. So if this was helpful for you guys. Then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.